Alrighty folks, uh, tonight we're going to look at some products from Shepard Associated. Uh, most of his lineup as of when he sent me this stuff. Uh, probably most noteworthy product uh, up until fairly recently was his uh, Frag Dangler. Uh, but we'll look at his uh, single cell placard, chest rig, uh, Dangler, and a couple other products. And... Uh, kind of introduce you to the company, although I might have sat on this for a little bit too long for that to uh, really be the first time you've seen them. So we'll get the stuff on the table and take a look at it. All right, so we got most of the spread on the table here. Uh, Shepard Associated has has since released some, some new products. Uh, he's got his line of GP pouches that are coming out in various sizes. Uh, that have kind of the same function as the Spiritus uh, Just a Pouch, or I think it's Plat Attack has one, uh, with kind of a void behind the pouch for magazines, uh, which is a, a cool concept, and I'm glad to see it taken off. Uh, it adds more more capability to, to GP pockets, or belt kits for that matter. Uh, so the cool thing about the Spiritus Associated, uh, excuse me, Shepherd Associated lineup is uh, it's kind of a family of products that all work together, as you would hope most vendors' products do. Uh, but it's kind of scalable. Uh, and it all kind of starts with the super lightweight rig, uh, but you could split hairs and say that that's not really the case. So uh, this uh, panel, as it sits, is the, the super lightweight rig. Uh, and you can see it's uh, mesh construction. It does have some loop there, so if you wanted to use it as a placard, you could or some hook, I'm sorry. Uh, you could use it as a placard. Uh, kind of like the Cry Airlight uh, chest rig that goes with the MBAV. Uh, so that's kind of neat. I, I'm a big fan of lighter weight options if they work for what you're doing, uh, which I think this one absolutely could. Uh, some of your heavier military radios off on the sides uh, might move around a little bit depending on how you're wearing it. Uh, but that could be easily fixed by snugging it up some more or uh, potentially a, a later future redesign with maybe some uh, Tegris involved. I don't know. It's not a huge deal. It's a lightweight chest rig that behaves like a lightweight chest rig does. So it's not, not his fault or, or a design issue, if you will. Uh, what is kind of interesting is the way it's attached right now. And I'll explain kind of this goofy attachment system as we go through here. Uh, but you could absolutely weave on a side-release buckle instead of that tri-glide there and use the, the buckles on the harness uh, without any issue. But uh, the reason why this is set up this way, and I had to ask him how this worked because he sent it to me kind of without directions, and, and I failed at figuring it out. And I was a little bit ashamed to admit that because I like to think that I can figure these things out most of the time. Uh, but so by weaving it into that lower loop there, it allows you to take his single cell placard now and connect it to the buckles. And then it will interface as kind of the front flap uh, or the front pocket of the super lightweight rig. Uh, I will say the attachment leaves a little bit to be desired. If he had covered this middle uh, row of Molly with some Velcro, it would marry up much better. But as you can see, you've kind of got an inch of continuity and then it's broken and then an inch of continuity and there's not a ton of velcro on the back of here so depending on how it sits you might miss one of those inches of continuity uh as is so cool concept that maybe a little bit of tweaking depending on how popular using it in that configuration ends up being uh but again small small minor fault right just one one strip of velcro could easily fix that uh, the harness, I do appreciate the harness being uh, Cordura as opposed to just raw webbing. Uh, the, ex the extra width there uh, kind of helps bear weight better. Uh, there are some more things uh, that it could have incorporated in the harness with all that kind of real estate there. Uh, and done something kind of like the parachute gear uh, improved communication harness. Uh, or just a little bit more routing options as you get to the top of the harness. Uh, but it is well made. It's a nice H harness layout. Uh, he's got his kind of his angle there figured out well, so it doesn't ride into your neck or anything like that. Uh, he's got the loop field on the, the back face of the harness there. 
and then the inside is just uh, webbing. So again, potentially could have added some spacer mesh, but it is kind of built around this, this super lightweight rig. So how much padding do you really need on a chest rig that should stay fairly sparse, right? Uh, moving on from those two items, we've got his single cell placard here, which we kind of already looked at a little bit. Uh, it's got a nice Velcro field on the front so you can expand and use that later on as needed uh, with, you know, there's Molly panels out there now, not necessarily just from uh, Shepherd Associated, but everybody's got accessories out there for placards, uh, especially this design. And the world is your oyster with whatever you want to put in there. It does have a loop interior on both sides, so it'll work with all of your Spiritus type inserts. Uh, the backside we already talked about has about as much Velcro as it could. Uh, he can add an inch across the top if he really wanted to. It's a fairly short placard uh, as in terms of height. I wouldn't mind seeing it be an inch taller uh, just to help get a little bit more coverage on the mags, uh, retain them potentially a little better. You still get enough grip uh, on the mag or enough purchase on the mag to draw it even with that added inch. But I think a lot of the, the different options out there these days are uh, this height. So not a huge deal there. Uh, and I, I don't necessarily want to reflect my personal preferences across what the industry should be doing. So uh, no, no real complaint. Uh, he also has these uh, elastic wingman pouches here or, or side hangers. I don't know what people are calling these horizontal danglers. Maybe we'll, we'll coin that term. Uh, so you can put a uh, pistol mag or multi-tool or flashlight or whatever. Uh, and you could do that along the bottom too if you wanted. Again, the world's your oyster. It's Velcro attached to Velcro. So you do it however you want. You'd even get crazy and, and angle a pistol mag off the bottom of that thing. And I'm sure if you sandwiched that on a plate carrier or something, it would stay on there just fine. <clears throat> he has his uh, version of the dangler here, which uh, has a velcro flap on it uh, but it can also uh, close up and then you could get yourself a, a waist strap and use it as a fanny pack i almost prefer that configuration on fanny packs these days especially if it's more of a duty oriented fanny pack setup uh, because then you have kind of this built-in sandwich where you could put a knife behind it or whatever else you wanted there uh, to kind of keep it in there you would have to use a loop, a dual loop uh, insert in there, but that's not a huge deal. You could you could have that made real easy. Uh, looking internal on this thing, well, you've got double zippers, first of all, so you can open it however you want. Always a fan of double zippers. Uh, for nothing else, if one breaks, you can still close the whole pouch. Uh, looking inside, you've got loop on the front face and then elastic on the back face. Uh, I've made this comment about other products before, but the elastic, in my opinion, runs too close to the top of the pouch. It's a little, my opinion's negated a little bit there because it is split uh, two inch elastic. So you can use the, only the bottom elastic to retain your items if you really want to, uh, and then you don't run into that issue. But I think it would be kind of nice to see either the bottom be two inches and the top be an inch so you have a little bit of separation or even just two pieces of one inch elastic there. Uh, but if you've got some sensitive stuff, it is very well retained in there, especially if you use the top elastic to do so. Uh, yeah, I don't know, six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Uh, you've got grommets on the bottom, so you have drainage, uh, which is what grommets are for, uh, or you can do some arts and crafts and put your shot cord in there and uh, <clears throat> use it to retain a tourniquet, if that's what you want. And then kind of the flagship product uh, at the time that I got this stuff, I've had it for a while and I've been messing around with it for a little bit, is the uh, frag grenade dangler pouch thing uh, as made famous by some cool guys in Afghanistan. And then the idea kind of took off. I, I thought they were kind of dumb at first, if I'm being completely frank. Uh, I don't know. I, I've never had a need for frag grenades. Uh, I haven't had much exposure to them, so I didn't really see necessarily the utility in it. And frag grenades kind of have a little bit of mass to them, so I kind of thought this would kind of bounce around on you uh, as you're running around on your belt. And in retrospect, I don't think that's entirely true, 
I don't think it's nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, the width is kind of, kind of ends up being the width of the webbing. Uh, so you don't really get much side to side torquing there, especially when this is on a belt. Uh, you do get a little bit of wobble on it, but I think you'd have to be booking it pretty hard for that to be overly annoying. Uh, and it does help free up some space on your belt if you're running into that issue. So you can drop it kind of between two pouches and get it below, um, below something else that you need on your belt. Uh, if you just really, really need that extra, extra thrown munition on your belt. Um, I find it kind of interesting, not necessarily related to Shepard Associated, the, the ebb and flow in belt kits. So uh, when I first started getting interested in this stuff, uh, almost pre-GWAT uh, and, and following Light Fighter pretty regularly, there was almost a competition with uh, duty belts to see how much stuff you could fit on your belt. And if you go back in the time machine and look at the, some of those threads, it's kind of ridiculous. Some guys would have like four pistol mags and then a drop leg with another four pistol mags and some rifle mags on it. And it was pretty silly. And then as time went by, we saw belt kits slimming down more and more and more, uh, sometimes to the point where it was just a pistol, uh, maybe a pistol and a pistol mag. Um, it was pretty slim. And then we're, we're kind of starting to go back the other direction where we're putting an emphasis on maybe slimming up what's on our, our armor and relying on the belt a little bit more. Uh, so we're kind of getting back to those, those heavy belt kits, uh, which is just kind of interesting to me. But in, in that aspect, these make a good bit of sense. Uh, if you've got a reason to have some frags, uh, you know, more than one frag, or you've got a lot of stuff on your belt, this can help clear up some space. Uh, it's Velcro with a snap reinforcement. And then forgive my plastic frag grenade here. Uh, it, I think it's to scale. Uh, but it fits in there pretty well and uh, falls out well if it had some mass. So I don't know how excited I would be uh, walking around with uh, explosives in an inverted pouch without a the positive lock of like a side release buckle. But I think it's fairly secure between the snap and the Velcro uh, that you don't have to worry about yard sale and your, your explosives. But kind of an interesting product. Take it or leave it on these. I'm still not totally sold that if I was carrying frags around, I would need one of these. But I can definitely see why some people would. And I don't hate the idea nearly as much as I did before. So that's kind of the, the Shepard Associated product lineup for you. Uh, again, as of when I got this, he's now introduced some other products and he has some even cooler products in the works. Uh, if you've been following his company from kind of the beginning, struggled with kind of growing too fast, uh, but I think he's definitely turned a new leaf and he's keeping up on lead times and whatnot and, and budgeting kind of his capacity much better than he did in the past. So if you had those concerns, give him another chance, take a look at his company that's not coming from a place of bias. I had an order outstanding with him for quite some time, uh, but that was a custom order and, and those don't really grind my gears too much because I understand that that takes a lot of their uh, capacity for helping other customers away from them. So uh, take a look at Shepard Associated. Cool stuff. If, you've, if you're into drones, uh, definitely take a look. He's putting out some good content as well. And I highly recommend you check out his page or his website and see if there's anything there that interests you. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it.